Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time. I'm a piece of celery. <laughs> what? <laughs> we just had a very interesting... Um, um, Q and A with her actually um, over over on Gold. If you're uh, following us there, uh, so if you're a subscriber to Gold, you'll get to learn about Dutters and her her wrestling fandom. Heck, if you and... subscribe to Gold, I'll answer any question. You can send it to Sorg. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. There's there's there. Go to re- patreoncom slash wrestling mayhem show and more about the Patreoners mm-hmm. in a bit. Uh, in the meantime, here's Matt Carlin's joining us. The big board ready for the big Patreon in the bank round of the mayhem oh, mania. Sorg mayhem mania. We got two boards. Oh no. <laughs> We've got envelopes. What? There's three envelopes tonight. Mayhem mania. Patreon in the bank round. It's gonna be unbelievable. If you don't know what's going on, if you're watching this live and don't know, haven't stuck around to the the end of the show, perhaps go to mainstream Matt with one T dot blogspot dot com. Check out what the Mayhem Mania is, and it's gonna get wild tonight. And uh, mm-hmm. if the, everybody's that donated the Patreon is gonna be able to do something special with this. Uh, it's been a very fun thought experiment, and, and it brought a lot of a lot of joy to the wrestling mayhem show over the last few weeks um also with us from the j town johnstown pa it's bobby fj town hi everybody i am a potato <laughs> going with the vegetable thing oh that, that was on gold that's a, that's a new show like i'm sorry also with us from poughkeepsie new york is mad mike sorg um <laughs> why was i introduced last because you didn't tell me to introduce you first as a boss Sorg. on Patreon. All right, Sorg, you should know that. I mean, obviously, introduce Dutters first because ladies first. We're okay. all gentlemen here. Sure. Well, um, more or less. <laughs> I mean, are we? Mostly. Ish. Mostly. Well. Also, I am a carrot. Uh, oh. Not orange enough. Uh, have else. you seen these glasses, Bobby? They are orange. Not orange enough. Okay. You have to tan at least 84 days a year. Who says I don't? Brother. It's just not the first 84 right. days in the year. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find out more about us over at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube. Of course, so much going on there. Content every day. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. You can drop a line to us. And also drop a line to that email address of... Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And uh, you can join us here live uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. No, that's the, not the right thing. Uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com every Tuesday night about 9 p.m. Eastern time where we talk about what vegetable dutters may be. Um, that's right. Peanut butter. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, inside hey, jokes abound, of course. If Congress can make pizza a vegetable. What? <laughs> yeah, Congress tried to make pizza a vegetable. Look it up. Oh, okay, uh, and, and thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm stuck on that. Um, thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, including, of course, Mad Mike, who just joined on the Patreon, so he can get into the Mayhem Mania later today. <laughs> yeah! I'm buying moves, bitches. King I'm going to run this thing. We're getting WLC 2, and right after that, we're getting WLC 3. Showing your hand early, man. Come on. Come yeah. on. Hey, I, I'm, hey, not, Sorg. Uh, I'm not hey, doing Sorg. either of those things. Sorg, I told you it would work. Money, baby. <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> And also, uh, supporters got to give shout outs to our friend Antonio Garza from the wrestlingrevolution.com. Been so important us, the, the first Patreon a patron of the Wrestling Mayhem show. And of course, Boo Diggity! Woo! Woo! 
And of course, our friend as an executive producer of the show at the five dollar level, um, the man known to us only as not Bobby, uh, <laughs> Buddy Landell, <laughs> uh, Landell three on the Twitters. Thank you very, very much for having enough faith in the show uh, to be supporting and putting your money where your mouth is or where our mouths are or where our keyboards are, or where I got to replace a microphone over there. And that's very, very appreciated. Uh, one of the things, thanks to the Patreon supporters, I have a Roman Reigns cam. Whoa! Uh, we're going to use it for other things, too. But I don't for know now, if that camera's strong enough, Sork. No. Money well spent. <laughs> right. right. Time's new Roman Reigns. <laughs> uh, um, but you, also, you can support us as well so we can improve things way, here around the vegetable? studio. Romaine lettuce. Romaine Whoa. lettuce. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and support all of our sponsors and everything at Wrestling Mayhem Show.com. So, topic one of the night, of course, Raw in Pittsburgh. Last night, myself, uh, Dutters uh, uh, attended uh, amongst other people. Um, you guys all saw it at home, of course. And uh, the first thing I thought that one of the most interesting things of the night was Paul Heyman off the chain again. Um, <laughs> his mic keeps getting shut off. He mentioned <gasps> he mentioned UFC. <gasps> he got real about Bray Wyatt and the Undertaker. <gasps> They're not giving the belt back. Uh, Seth Rollins is a cheaper champion. He's just dropping bombs all night long, and Paul and and Brock Lesnar gets paid a bunch to stand there. Mm-hmm. But he was there nonetheless. Um, what did you guys think of that? Like, yeah, daughters, you were there in person to hear it uh, 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 in person. Uh, what did you think of Paul Heyman last night? Amazing. I'm surprised he didn't pass out. <laughs> <laughs> he just kept going and going and going, and it was like not even a breath in between. And he was just late. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Usually, if anyone else would have talked that long. I would have gone up to go to the bathroom or get nachos, but he, I'm just totally. The, the audience was enthralled with it, yeah. weren't they? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, completely. And, and like like you said, when he dropped the UFC, I was like, ooh, unifying the UFC championship. With and he's calling out the people in power in the back and, like, and, and everything. It was, it was tremendous. I don't want this. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I know being a wrestling fan, what's, what's, real in quotes i don't know right right right, right. what's not and but there are moments like that where i just want to be like they didn't know he was going to do this (laughs) just because it makes me feel so it just you know you just want to get into it and think that and and that's the biggest thing is like make us believe enough of like maybe he wasn't supposed to do that maybe that wasn't supposed to happen and it definitely feels like that with Heyman. Mm -hmm. uh matt what did you think watching that from home i keep catching matt off off Sorry, sorry. I was running off looking for the link to the Deadspin article because there was a Deadspin article um, that picked up on Heyman mentioning that Brock Lesnar would unify the WWE Championship and the UFC Championship, <laughs> which is always fun whenever you get the mainstream to kind of like take a little bite, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I think my, my favorite part was when um, was definitely when Heyman said that that the title didn't belong to the WWE, the title belonged to Brock Lesnar. And that was like one of those other, you know, little things that make you think, well, you know, it's kind of right. You know, if Brock wants to keep the belt, he could probably just keep the belt as long as he wants to. You know, if he doesn't want to play along, he could just keep it as long as he wants. Well, and I know we talked about that. Um, we, we, we almost were talking about that going into – um. The match last year against The Undertaker about how interesting it would be if Brock almost looked like he was going into business for himself. It was starting to like, I hate the word shoot um, mm-hmm. on The Undertaker, but wouldn't it be interesting if if they kind of recycled that idea that we were kicking around a year ago and brought it up um, for this year's WrestleMania against Roman Reigns, against someone that no one really expects anything of from a legitimate fighting ability and all of a sudden Brock Lesnar is like going side control on Roman Reigns and <laughs> everyone there is like oh shoot <laughs> you know what about you There's Bobby so many places to go what about you Bobby um it, one of Paul Heyman's best promos and that's saying something because Paul Heyman has had some of the best promos in the last couple years mm-hmm. um I, I kind of made me want Brock Lesnar to win this match even more um, I love the fact that they mentioned the Montreal Screwjob. And, like, <laughs> what are they going to do about it? 
like it's Brock Lesnar. You're not going to try to strong. <laughs> I love that. What he said, you're go- he's going to personally destroy anybody involved yeah. in a Montreal <laughs> screw job situation at WrestleMania. No, they wouldn't uh, leave alive. You wouldn't leave alive. <laughs> and I, I would not put it past him to do that. At that point, I, I was almost prefer they do that now. I, I, I was like, I was close to like, 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 uh, uh tweeting at Joe Dombrowski to say, "Are you ready for the next documentary for this?" <laughs> <laughs> like, MontrealTheory.com, by the way. Plugs. Could you imagine if they try and screw Brock Lesnar over, and then the WrestleMania post show is literally just Brock tearing through every backstage <laughs> tech and agent just. Beating them up and a cameraman Just following them fifteen times in a row. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like the final sequence of No Holds Barred. <laughs> and, and, and that's right, Brock Lesnar is. Uh, I guess. Well, I guess in this case, Brock Lesnar would be Rip, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Paul Heyman just yelling. Like if he just grabs Vince McMahon and screams, "What's that smell?" <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. That'd oh, he would just calling everybody jerk ass. <laughs> <laughs> or jock, jock ass. That's jock what it was. Jock jock ass. Ass. A term I've never heard anywhere else. Like, is this what they threw around the gym in the 80s? Jock but that's ass. a whole <laughs> other kind of thing. I, I mean, the, the thing that really got me about Heyman's promo, it wasn't really mentioning the UFC, because with Brock out there, I figure he probably would say something. Mm-hmm. He, call, he essentially called Seth Rollins a low-rent champion. Yeah. Like that, I'm like, ooh, that's that's a bit of a blow. That's a little like I don't think that was supposed to be in there. I'm not. I mean, I'm sure it probably was on some point, but like, like just saying WWE can't afford him, but they can afford Seth Rollins. Like that was a bit much. Could it have been a pl- planting a seed though of dissension? I mean, yeah. I mean, could maybe Heyman turn on Lesnar? Like go with maybe Seth I feel, Rollins. I do, I do feel like they're throwing kinda, it out there. I do feel like they've kind of done that because they've done the kind of like Heyman kind of saying nice things, semi working with in the past, like mm-hmm. Rollins and and it, it even Reigns to a certain point. He's like said mm-hmm. good things about Reigns until this week, of course, when he talked about how his family is a bunch of savages, which I thought was a really yeah, interesting that was kind of wording. Weird. It's like yeah. where are we going with this? I was like <laughs> and and. All that and other fun stuff. The heads off of fishes. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, are we getting a little racist here? <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's appropriate to laugh at. Of now. course, this is the ca- this is the show where we've like, uh, you know, talked about it, like that we we think that they pretty much wrestled dinosaurs on the island to prepare for football and pro wrestling. Um, but what um, what's that? They didn't. I, I, you know, according to Paul Heyman, apparently they just beat people up in bars. So. Well, and at the uh, what it was at the. Uh, the guys working out outside. What did he call them? Down the beach. The muscle heads. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I don't remember it now. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, hey. Is this the point where we talk about all the uh, Roman Reigns hate? Um, yeah. I, also, interesting that, that the, Pittsburgh was 100% um, on the Brock Lesnar side. Mm-hmm. Like, they, I, I, I think I tweeted, Pittsburgh likes ass kickers. And, they're, and Brock Lesnar is their, their guy. Right. Um, but yeah, it was pretty uh, John Cena ask uh, when 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 Reigns was shown, came out, anything like that. Like, this is the first you've seen it in person, right? Yeah. The, honestly, it was like some sort of weird Twilight Zone where everybody hated Roman Reigns. Everybody loved Brock and everybody loved John Cena. Yeah. Like I just didn't. It, it was like, where did this come from? And I don't think I'm that disconnected with wrestling, but it was just like, when did this all happen? <laughs> and I'm all like, yeah, Roman Reigns. And everybody's like, bro. And I'm like, yay, bro. <laughs> I like that guy. He's big and sweaty. Yay. <laughs> That's why I like wrestling for big sweaty men like Brock Lesnar. But I, I, I think it's more. <laughs> it's very deep. People are, I think I feel like maybe at a certain point people are more fans of Paul Heyman saying things yeah. than than anything. And, and, and Paul Heyman is really good about painting Brock as being this really awesome ass kicker. And anytime Brock has shown up, mm-hmm. he's been an ass kicker. And we have recently seen him at Royal Rumble being an ass and kicker. And he looks good. Mm-hmm. Brock looks really good. Like he doesn't look like a, just a muscle bound big guy. He looks like he's in shape. I don't think he's as as built as he was the first mm-hmm. time around because he no. he definitely uh, that was wasted legs. bulk. Right, right. It was it was show bulk yeah. basically. And then yeah, I mean he, he's also learned how to cut weight too. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Like he was very bulky when he like in 2002, but mm-hmm. when UFC you cannot be that bulky up top physically because no. you will get destroyed. Like you got to cut weight and you have to be more toned and ripped than anything else. You got you got to be able to move and 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 yeah. yeah. And, and again, the weight classes as well, it probably affects that a bit too. So I think that that just carries over and he just, you know, works but he still sweats like a hog when he's in the ring though. Oh yeah. That's so he has to stay wet cuz he's a street shark. <laughs> He is a physical embodiment of a street shark. Yep, mm-hmm. apparently. Um, I apologize, I, Mr. Lesnar. Please do not destroy me. I, <laughs> I have a question. Um, I remember the last time Brock had a big WrestleMania match like this that wasn't with The Undertaker. Um, it was heavily rumored that Brock was going to be leaving after this match. Oh, mm-hmm. no. You were there for that, but, weren't you? Yes, I was. I, that was WrestleMania 20. I was there. Everyone hated it. Do you think that Paul Heyman said that Brock would take the WWE title and unify it with the UFC title to try and negate that because yeah. any fan of wrestling or UFC would be like, that'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> like, could you imagine if Brock rolled in to UFC 502 or whatever the next one, like ones down the line is, and he's rolling in with the WWE title against the UFC champion? Maybe they'll do like a CM Punk thing where he left with the title and just show up at Comic Con or wherever he wants to show up with it. Mm-hmm. Maybe he shows up as CM Punk's first opponent in UFC. They're different <laughs> classes. I know, but could you imagine Brock Lesnar versus Philip Brooks? It looked ridiculous when they did pro wrestling, uh, so I could not even imagine on the UFC because I mean, I mean, I mean, Punk looked tiny next to him; like it was almost unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Um. And 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 I like and I like intergender wrestling, which is like you know on the surface kind of unbelievable, you know. Um, but yeah, it depends who depends who's wrestling who. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Eamon's asking in the chat room, do you think it plays into what Triple H mentioned on the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast about how they are playing with kayfabe? Absolutely, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. absolutely. absolutely. Uh, you know, we're it, into the new work era, Sorg. Everybody knows that the matches are being predetermined. So WWE has evolved and they are now working us in a brand new way. And, and now, like we said before, we don't know where the reality lies. Is it on Total Divas? Probably not. <laughs> Is it on uh, one of these WWE Network specials they're putting together? Well, maybe, probably not. Is it on the Stone Cold podcast? Um, maybe well, not. I mean, dirt, the dirt sheets are the new kayfabe. That's what. But it the is. dirt right. sheets are getting fed stuff too. Mm-hmm. They're getting fed what people want them to feed. Like mm-hmm. you hear a news report about Brock Lesnar walked out of Raw. Him and McMahon had a big dust up in the backstage, and I'm sitting there reading it. I'm like, I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. I don't believe anything anymore. Everything is a big fat lie, even the stuff that might be true. They're holding a talent only meeting, which they hold every week. Yeah, every mm-hmm. seven, every couple weeks. Is it all part of the manipulation? You know, you don't know where where the storyline is. The storyline has gone beyond the television show. It's everywhere now. It's 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 on Twitter. It's on the website. Everything's being strings are being pulled everywhere, especially this time of year when everybody's on point and focused and and driving towards <laughs> WrestleMania. You don't know where the next fast thing's coming fast from. Fastlane was last month. And, and, <laughs> and being in journalism, Matt, you know this more than anybody. It's not about what you, you know what you know. It's how fast you get it out there. It's mm. not fact-checking. Mm-hmm. It's just put it out there. What do I know? I want to be the first. Oh, and yeah. It, 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 no matter exactly. how far-fetched. No, when you're dealing with... The Bill it, it's, hard enough when you're, it's hard enough when you're a card-carrying journalist like myself. But, you know, these wrestling websites, news websites... They have no bones about posting anything. They will post anything mm-hmm. their sources tell them. So if you've got somebody, you know, if you if you're someone inside WWE and you know you've got somebody on the outside working for one of these websites and you've got him on the hook and he's putting everything that you're telling him into print, and you go tell Vince and Vince says, "Well, hey pal, um, feed him this." And then you feed them that, and it's up on the website, and it's off and running. So, and then we're all talking about and, it. And, and they're not, they're not, uh, you know, you, you notice there's more mentions of the things you've heard on Twitter. You did mm-hmm. this, you know, the Divas, Divas mm-hmm. give a Divas a chance, you know, blew up. And other things have been mentioned by Triple H as well, right? Um, and they're not reacting to them, but they're playing with them. 
right? Like they're like they're they're making it their own. The uh, cancel cancel WWE Network got got uh, 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 you know kind of hijacked by WWE itself, right? Um, and 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 downplayed and turned into something else. Uh, well, so did uh, Boycott Raw. Uh, Boycott Raw. That's yeah. the one I'm thinking of. Actually, yeah. Boycott Raw uh, uh, happened, and they they turned it into something and turned it into a storyline. Isn't that what turned into the Daniel Bryan and everybody running no, into hijack Raw? That was the hijack raw. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it, I mean, even Triple H tried to spin the canceled WWE network one right after the Super Bowl. He's like, "Oh, everyone wanted to cancel the NFL network <laughs> after the Super Bowl." Like, <laughs> exactly. I remember he specifically said that. I'm like, "That's a genius line." But like, he's not, and also he's not like they could just sit there like, "Ah, oh, these fans on the internet, they don't know what they're talking about on their keyboards in their basements." <laughs> um, you know, but they're they're not That's they're not studio sorg. They're not <laughs> belittling. They're not belittling the fans in the way they do it, which they could easily do, mm-hmm. and they have on interviews in the past and everything. Um, but they're being very smart, and, and and if nothing else, if you're a person that participated and give divas a chance, now they're speaking direct back to you by doing something with it, and then making us vomit when they put Eva Marie. On the give thief is a chance promo, oh, but um, now they're trolling us. We didn't even mention the deal on Twitter with AJ and Stephanie McMahon, mm-hmm. where everybody saw what AJ tweeted back to Stephanie McMahon, and everyone, me included, is like, "Oh my God, AJ did this." CM Punk, oh my God, she came back the next week. Sorg, mm-hmm. what? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hulk, line and sinker. We are. It's fine. I, I I'll accept it. You, I'm easily manipulated. I, I will. I will. I mean, even if that I wasn't the plan, every time. Even if that wasn't the plan, it kind of seems like it was now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe it wasn't. Like, and maybe it wasn't. If it wasn't the plan, AJ responding like, "Well, I guess we should probably bring her right back to capitalize on this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and also, you know, um, I had these conversations with somebody in the business. A lot about how this is a carny thing and being impressed by the carny things that some people do His Arnie uh, at, at the Arnie shows. No, that's like another guy, and I think he has a DVD. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it, but it, that's what it is. This is the new carny thing to make us and trick us and make us believe again. And now Twitter is a tool for it. Um, and I think it's their internet they're, carnival. It's internet carnival, exactly. Um, it, it's it's kayfabe in us via via social media, and it, and it's really really fantastic. You know, and I you know I love it when I'm like, oh, they got me. You know, I mean, we're yeah, we're looking at this next the next week. You're like, there's AJ. I thought there was a problem, and um and and they're completely. Uh, manipulating the message, they're big enough they can do that, and they're having fun with it, and everybody's going along for the ride, and, and I think it's pretty fantastic to watch. The WWE is one of the most social media savvy organizations out there. They know, they've read the books, they've mm. done the research, they know how to turn these things and around. educated their workers yeah very well mm-hmm. there's some that screw up every once in a while, mm-hmm. but even like ones that do speak out, like Darren Young about the going over to the Arab arab emirates and everything um but they're very and this is after a really big false starts they've had before mm-hmm. um and they just completely turned around on it and they're one hey, of the biggest hey, sword hmm. you remember tout <laughs> <laughs> well well there's a fa- false start remember wwe universe their own social mm-hmm. network i mean yeah 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 you can only control the message so far <gasps> Well, uh, well, we'll get into a little bit more about Raw from last night, including John Cena's creepy, creepy smile. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, if I can find my mouse here, uh, let's talk about uh, supporting the show. And one way you can do that and, and get some really cool pro wrestling is going to IndieWrestling.com or also known as Indie, or I'm sorry, uh, PittsburghWrestling.com as well. IndieWrestling.us, PittsburghWrestling.com. I'm sorry, I'm mixing the message here. Um, there you can pick up all the uh, shows, including this past week's Cage Combat in Clearfield uh, with a friend of the show, John McChesney and Joseph Brooks. And hey, that guy, that guy that was at ringside uh, last night at Raw, Justin Labar is in that too. Uh, for some reason, I didn't see him with the neck brace from the weekend, though, there at ringside when he was high five and uh, Randy Orton. But, anyways, well, he, was um, was he, he was probably feeling pretty good at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you missed me making I heard it was confiscated by uh, WWE security. Oh, that could be too. 
That could be too. <laughs> um, but it was a great time. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff. There's actually a recap video up there on the YouTube and on the Facebook for uh, IWC, the Interna- International Wrestling Cartel, all the way up. Uh, if you're a Kato fan, it was his uh, last match in Clearfield. You can see what happened after that here with Crimson. Um, and like I said, big cage match with uh, John McChesney, and Joseph Brooks. A lot of fun there. Friends of the show like um, um, uh, Andrew Palace and Chess Flex are getting into it for the Super Indie title. Uh, Colin Delaney, who has also been recently on the Indie Mayhem show, and so much more. Uh, DVD, you can pre-order right now. And you can actually uh, check out uh, uh, digital download will be up this Wednesday. So probably by the time you hear this for a lot of you guys, uh, you can actually go snag that uh, right away and check out what happened just Saturday. Uh, it's in the render. It's actually sitting there, ready to get uploaded here overnight, uh, and we'll have that up in the morning. So uh, go check it out. Support the show. Support Sorgatron Media, producer of these fine, fine podcasts that you're listening to, um, and support indie wrestling. So back at it, um, we have another topic. Of course, like, uh, you know, big you know, Raw. Eh, you know, Raw was really good last night. There's not much else going on really. You know, we're heading into WrestleMania. They're, they're packing a lot of stuff into these. Um, yeah, and how about pulled out that card really quickly? Oh, they did. Oh, they did. It fleshed it out. It usually gets really interesting by the time they get around to Pittsburgh. Uh, the last few years here, uh, pre. They're still filling in the Intercontinental Championship match. Intercontinental Championship match. Stardust was that attitude. I'm so sad about that. I know. I know. Um, so, uh, you know, but, but John Cena's creeps him out. Uh, that is, you mentioned how, uh, everybody, uh, I was really surprised my, uh, as well. You, you, it seemed like everybody was behind John Cena. Um, of course we, it was USA versus Russia. So I think yeah. it made it a little easier, but there was, there was no wavering like no. at all when, mm-hmm. when, when we had that situation. No, I'm so used to going to a wrestling show and having, you know, John Cena sucks chanted at least several times during the event and, and this not even once. It was it was something unusual for me. Well it did happen in the dark match though. Well yeah. <laughs> that was different. <laughs> but it was it was not it was definitely a situation where it was like it wasn't just the kids yelling for him, it was grown ups and adults yelling <laughs> for mm-hmm, him. Which mm-hmm. was awesome and, and, and I, I don't I don't mind seeing him as a good guy and a, a fan favorite mm-hmm. because um I think he does a lot of good things and I think he brings a lot of fans in. Because whenever I, I know for people who don't even follow WWE, it's like, oh, I know John Cena. They're, he's the one they know. And mm-hmm. it's, but yeah, it, it's a fun turn and it was kind of funny to see. I was uh, actually talking with the Larry uh, about the, because we saw the shots of some of the kids in the front row that had all the Cena mm-hmm. stuff on. I was like, yeah, the parents buy every single Cena thing. It's like they're cosplaying as John Cena at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he does have a merch line at Kmart, so yes, he does. Yes. That makes it a little easier. Mm-hmm. And the wrestling fans will shop at Kmart, so that makes it a little. It's really pathetic at Kmart, by the way. Have you ever looked for WWE stuff at Kmart? <laughs> I mean, I think it depends on the Kmart sorg. I we have some really crappy Kmart's around here. Then, yeah. yeah, the Kmart in Penn Station is on. Point. It's Penn Station. Penn Station. It's not <laughs> Bridgeville. <laughs> but that's the one you expect to be sold out of stuff. No. Mm-hmm. I don't think we get this stuff to be sold out that's of That's what stuff. I expect to be well stocked. I don't think, like, general. I don't think the people that shop at Kmart in the uh, outskirts of Pittsburgh are the same they shop at a Kmart in Penn Station. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that out there. Um, this, ca- this Kmart has an active volcano. <laughs> It's an SNL skit about Walmart. I'm sorry. It seems I like it. It seems like it sometimes. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, but but uh, uh, but no. I, I and, and and for something that I think we all kind of like. Eh, okay, he's gonna take on Rusev and probably beat him, and yeah. we're gonna completely Rocky for this thing. Which I heard a fan in the audience say, "Oh, this is just like the guy from Rocky IV. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's always the interesting thing. I don't know if you see the starters, uh, but uh, but you know, hearing the comments from other people in oh, the I crowd, it. It, like I, I don't know, did you hear it, like like that? There's a kid two rows behind me that loved it when Booker T came out and just went <laughs> insane when Booker T was announced for the commentary team. Did you have any good ones from your side? Ah, no, they were um, they shoot nothing, nothing too unusual. Um, we did have the well, we did have the the time when it kind of got a little bit boring. It went from the chance went from this is boring or to uh, CM Punk, which is now new. This is boring, obviously. And oh shoot, I wanted to start the three MB chant again. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's totally acceptable. Undertaker, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we were chanting for The Undertaker. And that was mostly during the Usos match. And I didn't hear any other kind of outlash crowd reactions uh, the rest of the night. I was worried after Royal, Royal Rumble last year, for instance. Oh, we're a bad crowd. Yeah, that's a reason we've been getting nothing <laughs> but live shows lately. Um, well, another one, July 11th. Which is the same date as like two indie shows that I'm involved in, which Yay. is fantastic. Oh, no. Yeah, in Pittsburgh. That's going to be fun. Three live shows, Sorg. Three live shows. Wow, <laughs> wow. I'm just going to have everybody else film the shows and I'm going to WWE. Um, <laughs> but sure. We have enough videographers now. I guess so. Um, but, anyways, geez, what was I getting into with that? Um, but I, I was actually also impressed that, that we didn't have like CM Punk chance when AJ Lee came out. That's a, that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Thank you, Pittsburgh, for classing it up a little bit there. Uh, really appreciated that. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Other than that, I mean, what did you guys think of uh, uh, the John Cena part of it? Um, he's, he, you know, there's been comments. Is like, it's like, I think one was, uh, if this is heel Cena, how would I know? Yeah. Uh, Sorg is strong. He'd be smile. Matt? I have a question about this. Oh, yeah. Then Matt. Um, do you think that WWE is hedging their bets with Mania because they know if they give the belt to Roman Reigns, people are going to be really, really, really angry. But if they give the U.S. title to John Cena and the IC title to Daniel Bryan, it'll soften the blow. That will be interesting. Um, kind of along with that, I mean, have you remembered when the IC and U.S. titles meant more than they do now? No, they're they're building the undercard so much because they know that main event's going to get shit on. Well, and and the way they've they've done the belt with like we haven't defended for a while, we don't have anything fight anybody fighting for anything else than who's in line for this guy. I mean, you need something more significant, and maybe the numbers are showing it. You know, as far as the pay per views and, and such, you know. Um, are they are they making something compelling enough without that belt on top? And what if we make these other belts? What if we get to the point where we get a uh, Bret Hart uh, Bulldog situation at SummerSlam where the IC belt is uh, main event again? Uh, Matt, you had some comments? I might have derailed off another tangent, though. Uh, Sorgatron, John Cena is pure evil. <laughs> John Cena does very mean things. The American Over Empire reason. John Cena? Poor Rusev and Lana do nothing but mind their own business. <laughs> Rusev beat him once. He's nothing but a nice guy. Just loves John Cena country. comes out there and beats him up like a child just so he can get his title match. Sorgatron, this man is a heel. Well, He's been a heel for years, actually. One of the Twitter oh, comments was that he was holding him captive. <laughs> he actually held yeah. a man ransom for what he wanted. <laughs> Just like Seth Rollins did to get the authority back, like Gaiman said in the chat room. Let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. Let's it's be com- basically what exactly what Seth Rollins did. Let, let's be but completely Cena honest. Hulk Hogan has done much, much worse stuff in the name of America in the eighties. <laughs> I, don't I know mean, Hogan, America I has done evil. much worse stuff in the name of America. Hulk H- or I'm sorry, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was the biggest asshole for not letting Nikolai Volkov sing the song of his people before his match, <laughs> just <laughs> because it's America. <laughs> Beat just up a match. Russian guy and like choked him out because he wouldn't give him a title match. Hulk Hogan never did that. John Cena is the biggest American jerk I've ever seen in my life. John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question though. Stephanie said that John Cena had to change Rusev's mind. He didn't. No, he, he, no. To fight John Cena. No, he, no, no. He, no. he, he no, changed no. Mike, Lana's Mike, mind. He changed Rusev's mind from awake to unconscious. That's how he changed Rusev's mind. But it, uh, I don't. That doesn't make sense. Don't though. don't worry don't about your logic at this time. It's America, Mike. Everybody knows. Well, everybody who's in a relationship knows the woman's <laughs> in control. So if the woman says you're going to do something, you can't back out of it. It's Wait, like a verbal contract. Is, it, is this a diva terrible. recap Wait, here? They have, they, ha- they have reasons to kind of like recoil on that. <laughs> Like, could you imagine if Rusev comes out next week and says, I still don't want to change John, face John Cena? You didn't change my mind. She was just scared. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Well, they did have a kind of a backstage segment with uh, Lana and him, which um, I don't know if you guys know this, but she might be leaving to do that movie. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is a way to get her off TV, like to have them kind of split for a while? That could be. Um, yeah. That would be really unfortunate. It would be. Oh, wait, and she's not like tech. I, I think she's done the movie. Or is she doing another movie? 
No, she, she she's doing the one with Edge. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I don't think they filmed it yet. That's right. And they could, yeah, I could see that. You know, uh, John Cena wins. They split for a bit. You know, Rusev goes through some kind of Russian purgatory in the undercard. <laughs> you don't think Rusev's going to, like, kick her, do Russian you? purgatory. <laughs> you don't think Rusev's going to lose and then, like, kick Lana? I don't think they would. Do that. I don't think that would happen uh, in this day and age. I don't know. I don't know. No, how how don't far away are we from the uh, moment in the WrestleMania match where. Where, where Cena has to do the spot where he just just like lays one on Lana in the middle of the match. And that has to happen, right? You gotta force yourself upon Lana, John Cena. You don't then, represent my America. And you, then Nikki are, Bella comes out and beats her up. You are an evil man, John Cena. Wait, we haven't we haven't discussed uh, Axel Mania here. <laughs> oh, poor Curtis Axel. Poor yeah. Curtis Axel. A this is storyline set up. But this, uh, uh, oh, that's right. You wanted Curtis Axel to actually win the U.S. title yes. and then defend that at WrestleMania against John Cena. Yes. No, no, not against John Cena. I want John Cena to cost Rusev his undefeated streak on Raw, make him lose the belt to Curtis Axel, and then Rusev changes his own mind because John Cena, you lost me my title. You lost me my undefeated streak. I will fight you at WrestleMania. Didn't for the pride of my country and for the pride of myself. Didn't happen. I know! God damn it. <laughs> on that note guys we're gonna get to the big question we have some more to talk about what's that axel mania comes green. axel mania i wanted to, i was sad because we were leaving and i noticed yeah. I, I was checking out the nurse stand i wanted yeah. to see if they had any axel mania shirts what this is a missed opportunity right there <laughs> um but uh hey speaking of opportunities and opportunities to fill your hole, Bobby. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> With pizza. With pizza. There's an awkward transition on Boss Battle earlier tonight. But we love filling our holes with Slice on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> We're all mature here. <laughs> They're supporting great podcasts in Pittsburgh with pizza um, and pepperoni. Uh, check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. They're here in the South Hills, uh, right down the road along the tracks here in Beachview in the south neighborhood of uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, and you're also in Carnegie, PA, also southish. If you're heading out to the airport, you'll find it pretty easily. There's an exit for it. Get down to Main Street. Uh, great gourmet pizza made from scratch. Um, pizza goes with wrestling, right, guys? Um, you know, you get that, Wrestlem- you get that WrestleMania you get like a hundred chicken nuggets from the McDonald's, like we did that one time, and a pizza. Oh, chicken nuggets. Maybe you put the chicken nuggets on the pizza. If you bring the chicken nuggets to slice, I bet they'll put it on the pizza for you because they like Chachi working with you. Just booked my party, Sorg. They just booked your party. Are we gonna do that again? You got, you got to make sure Chachi comes because he's the he's the brainchild behind that. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> chicken McChachis. <laughs> <laughs> Check them out. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Ask them if they'll put chicken nuggets on your pizza for you <laughs> by telling them on Twitter at PGH underscore Slice over there or on Facebook. Look for Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram and let them know. Please, somebody in the chat right now, can you please tweet at PGH underscore Slice on it right now, sword. and ask them right ask now. them if they'll put chicken nuggets on a I'll pizza send them one right now because we're myself. wondering about it at on at Mayhem Show right now live uh, from Pittsburgh, PA and we're really curious about this right now uh, what was the last thing we were trying to get them to do? <laughs> Like, like we should just like, what is your, what is your concoction of the week that we can come with, come up with on these podcasts that we want to have during WrestleMania, um, and 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 ask Slice if they will make it, you know, because I mean they experiment. And so at one point they made a uh, a a football goalpost out of uh, breadsticks or something, um, nice. for for the Super Bowl. So I mean they have a lot of fun stuff on their Facebook and everything, but they support us. We like to support them, um, and they're good stuff. If you're in town, I mean, you know. You know, support the local guys. Support the little guys. And we'll be right back with the big question by Bobby F. J. Town. Ooh. Big question, F. J. Town. Scandalous. <gasps> this is Johnny Gargano, the bees knees, the cat's pajamas, and the hold your bag. Not Johnny Bananas, by the way, even though I like it. Yeah. You're watching the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're back, and it's time for the big question. But first, a mini question for you at home. As Dutters is finding out on Tinder, uh, let us know. Ryback 
Would you swipe right? He's got the arms. He's got the arms. <laughs> He's the big guy. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? And also, if you uh, swiped right on Ryback last night, let us know in Pittsburgh. Because <laughs> he was in town. Whoa. Let us know if Ryback really is the big guy. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. But actually what's going on, uh, our uh, big question for this week is actually being presented by Bobby F. J. Town. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, filling everybody. in. Hi, Bobby. Filling in for uh, Mr. Mr. Box, who is uh, taking a hiatus for the month of March. It's Box. It's it's the Box hiatus. I'm, I can't work. I can't work that into a thing. Uh, Bobby, what is our big question of the week? All right. Going to get a little controversial here. Oh, no. <gasps> With Bill Lamont resigning, oh no, we didn't talk. Do about you that. think that WWE dropped the ball when it came to his style of training by not getting rid of him and letting him resign, or do you think there is still room for this kind of training since concussions and injuries have become a more pertinent issue? Now let's, let's be clear: what is he specifically accused of? Uh, racism, homophobia. <laughs> As in, like, things he would yell at people yeah. during training sessions. In, injuring bullying. talent. And the injuring is, like, all, all I know is in, somebody supposedly you know, had... Weaponry. What? <laughs> what? He had a gun in his office. Oh, tax geez. evasion. Ta- oh, tax evasion? That's a new That's one. That's what they got Al Capone on. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Indecent exposure. Yeah, inde- well, for other people. Not himself. Um, and being Bill DeMott. Yes, being Bill DeMott. Hugh Morris. Hugh Morris. I was going to say, this is not humorous General at all. Hugh General Jack. Erection. <laughs> yeah, we can go on and on and on. But this is no laughing matter, Bobby. Basic garbage person. Yes. <laughs> Are you wants to go first? What's the question? Yeah, what's, <laughs> no, what's the question? Wait, do we support this okay. guy? I'm all in. The first part, the first part of the question was, do Swipe you right. WWE drop the ball? When it came to his style of training, by not getting rid of him sooner. Okay. And the, and the second part of the question is: Do you think there's still room for this kind of training? Not so much like the racism and stuff like that. Just the aggressive style, like maybe uh, uh, Stu Hart or or, or like uh, Hardcore this. Holly. Um, or, I'll go first on this one. Okay. Uh, hold on. Um, go ahead, Riz. Hi. But by the way, I I came on later, so you guys didn't see me come on. Um, being the one who's seen a lot of like training in his days as I was in high school football for about a year Mm -hmm. and um, I can tell you right off the bat that this training style isn't just Bill DeMott's training style no this is going on everywhere there's even a coaching bad tv show now starring Ray Lewis. Uh, but to answer the question... Allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, to answer the question, uh, they did what they had to do because they got caught doing... Because he allegedly got caught doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And it, it sucks because we've seen Tough Enough. Mm-hmm. He was... If... if if that was his toned down version of himself, mm-hmm. what's not toned down? Like we haven't seen video yet of something like that. And it is it, just like, but like I said, this, this doesn't happen just to build a on. This happens to every high school, every college, mm-hmm. every professional team. They all have that one psychotic coach that just tries to push the line and sometimes they get caught and sometimes they piss off the wrong person and they get released Mm -hmm. either justified or not. That's what, that's what happened. And that, that's pretty much all I got to say about that because that's what I've been taught before. Just that beat down attitude of, you're no good or something like that. It, it, it's it's hard on your mental state, but mm-hmm. some people actually do get motivated by that, mm-hmm. as strange as that sounds. 
And I think I think the style, I mean, wrestling's hard. I mean, some of the things that we hear when we're talking with a lot of people on the like Indie Mayhem show, people that have gone to Japan, is, you know, their tough style. And I don't know about abusive, mm-hmm. you know, the drill sergeant but it is tough. It is harrowing is physically taxing right um and 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 a lot a lot of they say a lot of you know wrestlers at home you know in in america are not doing nearly as much in their training now i think there's definitely a difference between that and the things he's being accused of uh, uh garza's in there saying he was kicking broken legs punching guys with concussions sexual harassment mm-hmm. oh, um there's no there's different. no place for that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah there's no place for that let's make that clear but is, is there t- room for stuff training tough training yes because getting there is going to staying there is going to be tough you know, you talk about the yeah. politics and, and everything. It's going to be tough. And, and, and I think that they're trying to mentally prepare people for this kind of stuff. And they're like, well, if you can't handle this, you're never going to handle the road. You're never going to handle day to day. And it should be more the day, the, the, the physical stuff, certainly. Um, now, now, the difference, I think, is the commonplace, the, the uh, homophobic terms and the racial slurs like those are things that are past their time you just can't do that these days and you know the thing is you can't do that in a public company you know um but generally you probably shouldn't do that you know you you still hear it unfortunately some places but you shouldn't be hearing that in a uh, publicly traded company's training center in, in orlando florida Right. You could maybe be hearing that in like some a boxing training facility in, in, in the hood oh. in New York, you know. But um, I mean, it, it's just it's not it's just not acceptable anymore socially. And, and it's past that. And it's not going to be acceptable when it gets out of the, the gym. So um, next. Um, I, I kind of I, I, I agree. Yes, uh, it was a fault on them that I didn't, they didn't react sooner. Uh, uh, mainly because these are allegations that have been circulating for a long time. Uh, similar allegations, uh, even from like dating back to when Demont was training uh, people in Deep South wrestling. Um, you know, there's that photo that got leaked of uh, I think it was like either Zack Ryder or Kurt Hawkins or one of the two like being forced to like strip naked and like shove their ass in another person's face or something like that. Yeah, like, it's, it's, well, that's it's hazing. Sick, that's right? hazing at that point. It, it, it's very, it was a hazing sort of um, uh, atmosphere that I think is the main reason why there's such a problem uh, with the lots training specifically. And to attest to kind of what Sorg is saying about um, how, you know, a tougher training style or um, like you mentioned, the Japanese training style, there's actually a really good um, documentary if anybody ever looks it up. It's actually on YouTube in parts um, called Gaia Girl it talks about the uh, the training of the female wrestlers. Can, can you say that, can you say that pronunciation again? And you broke uh, up. It, it's uh, spelled G A E A Gaia uh, Gaia Girls. If you just search it on YouTube, I think it's in a bunch of parts, and uh, it's about that intense sort of training style, training younger students to make their debut in Japanese women's wrestling. And there's actually this really intense scene where they're throwing drop kicks, and and she's not throwing them correctly, so her trainer throws off the ropes and drop kicks her right in the mouth, and she's busts open everything but it's, it's very much from a standpoint of if you aren't up to snuff when you get into that into that ring the people that you're facing you are facing will do much worse to you mm-hmm. it's comes from that sort of mentality not from a jock i want to exert my power over you mentality um and i think that's where training like demotts and and training as sort of showing it right there um, training like Demotts and training like that kind of is, is very different. No, no one wants people to take it easy on them. Mm-hmm. I don't think you don't learn anything from getting, you know, you know, being held by the hand or anything. But there's professionalism and there's certain things that go into it that, you know, play a factor that that lead to a healthy working environment. And and with Demotts history, that just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, you also have to remember, it's kind of different from high school sports and college sports because with wrestling, it's you're literally taking someone else's life into your hands as well as your own. Yeah. So it's not, it's not just about um, being physically tough for yourself. It's about always remaining focused on the task at hand because if you do something wrong just because you're slowing down or you're slacking, you could severely injure someone. You could kill them. 
Like, <laughs> like you almost have to, you almost have to have kind of a baptism by fire method of training for it. Because if you don't have that, then you're just going to be sloppy in the ring and you're going to hurt someone. Like that's one of the things Bret Hart, one of his claim to fames is he never hurt anyone in the ring. And yeah. he probably had one of the most rigorous training schedules of anyone in the mm-hmm. business just because his dad would literally bring people down and stretch them every single time they came to the house. Like, like you hear all the stories about the heart dungeon and everything, but the people who come out of there generally are like very safe, solid, efficient workers. Don't really hurt anyone unless it's a freak accident in the ring, but you never see him slack off or anything like that. Uh, Matt, you got any thoughts on this? Um, just kind of looking at it, like compare like Bill DeMott to like Bobby Knight, where oh, everybody cheers. knew what Bobby Knight was and, and how he was operating for years and years and years and years and years. And then finally it's the tipping point where it's one thing too many and it's, you know, it's one story too many. And then the public opinion shifts and the media spotlight points at you. And if you're a public institution or a publicly traded company, you're left with absolutely no choice. So it doesn't matter whether Bill DeMott did it or didn't do it. Once you're under that intense pressure, you have no, you have no, way out of that corner, you know, from a public relations perspective, you've got to get rid of him. He's got to go. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I mean, just talking about like, it, it's interesting because hearing about different trainers um, and you hear about guys like Bill DeMott who are extremely intense and cross the line from what you hear about. And then you hear about, like Lance Storm, and you never hear anything like that about Lance Storm. Mm-hmm. Now, does that mean Lance Storm is like, you know, a, a nice trainer? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he gets really intense too. Um, but I would assume that he also knows there's a line that you don't cross, mm-hmm. and that's the reason that you never hear anything about Lance Storm. Like you, Mike was just talking about Stu Hart. When did you? Did, Stu Hart trained a billion guys, and I don't remember anyone ever saying a bad thing about Stu Hart, about the way he trained guys. Sure, you heard about some guys getting pushed to the limit, um, but hell, there are stories like Hulk Hogan tells a story about getting his leg broke when he was still training. Mm -hmm. For absolutely, if you're going to believe Hogan's story, for absolutely no good reason other than to you know, a different era for sure, but to protect the business and, and, and see if he's business, serious, see how tough you are. And I think for, a, you know, just from the outside looking in that if you're a trainer in this business and someone else said, and you are going to be trained to take another person's life in your hands in that ring, you have got to be at an extremely high level of dedication, discipline, um, and, and how do you how do you cultivate that in somebody, um, especially if it's not there from the very start? Mm-hmm. I don't know. How do you motivate them? I mean, I guess there are different ways to do it. Some guys throw chairs. <laughs> Some guys yell and scream. And other people may have different ways of pushing buttons that are also successful. And maybe they're all successful in their own twisted way. But I, I think the bottom line is that, and one point I wanted to make, um, is that when, when, when we're talking about Bill DeMott, really how much does WWE lose in the long run by letting him go? Like what is Bill DeMott's track record as a trainer <laughs> of professional wrestlers that WWE could not possibly live without this man? I, I don't well, well, see well, 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 according I mean, Someone can explain it to me. I mean, a lot of these guys in NXT came – you know, pre-made, and it was, what, a finishing school, basically, well, right? Well, well to according, according to Bill DeMott's words, allegedly, he had to retrain Daniel Bryan. He wouldn't have been anything if it <laughs> oh, wasn't around. And also, <laughs> it's, it's not like they don't have other. They have the New Age Outlaws are there. Um, mm-hmm. They have Sarah Del Rey. Well, I believe, I believe uh, Jason Albert's actually going to be taking over. Right. Uh, Norman Smiley, uh, Sarah Del Rey. Yes, I mean, both friend of the show. It, it's not like they don't have, you know, other talent there he was just the head guy i think they honestly even just got rid of him because they are having tough enough come back Mm -hmm. 
Like, honestly, I think if that wasn't a thing, Bill DeMott would probably still be working there. Right. Well, we'll also keep in mind, he, uh, Bill, Bill DeMott, uh, 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 he resigned. Uh, he resigned. He wasn't, yeah, they didn't fire him. Yeah. He resigned. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean it wasn't without any fraud. one half dozen the other. Yeah. That's true. Um, yeah. <laughs> anybody else have a thought? Do you have um, a thought on this? I think uh, with a lot of – this isn't, like, a very – isolated incident as far as his behavior or a lot of like Riz was saying a lot of other people's behavior and I think if you hit a point where you can't cover it up anymore and it comes out and you have to deal with it like Matt said you can't just let that slide at that point and then you got to go hey I think you should probably quit now before you get fired yeah. your choice also the fact that like so many workers like well-known workers were speaking out about mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. I think really like uh Ethan Carter spoke <laughs> out mm. uh Tramparetta uh, Joey Ryan, who's I think one of the first to actually like make mm. note of him when he uh, went in for a tryout, a um, bunch of people. And, yeah. I just wonder why it took so long for a lot of this to come out because those guys haven't been in the WWE system in a long time. It mm. only it only takes one to start that mm. snowball effect, right? And, and yeah, the, I mean, like, what, what started things for? Um, sorry to interrupt you, but what started things with Bill Cosby? That's Same exactly principle at play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, one person started that whole wave and now it just took build them away yeah and, and and the the one guy that did speak up he was saying about how build them he had like you know concussions are such a big deal now mm-hmm. um he he said he had a concussion and build them came in and asked him how he was doing and then he slapped him in the head mm-hmm. <laughs> like an open hand slap oh. to the head like a, down on top of his head um another thing he said he would do was grab the ropes when the guys were in the ropes pull back and let it go and like it would hit their face hmm. um he said that uh one of his big targets was enzo um and he said that they had drills where they would drop enzo wrong everybody had to pick enzo up and drop him wrong oh that's so to show the wrong way to drop somebody oh jeez. yeah um among other things uh, but like matt was saying like Stu hart would do like he he wouldn't hurt somebody on purpose he would push them to see how far they could go mm-hmm Right. Without being a dick and, and hurting. Yeah, there's you know? there's a thin line between mm-hmm. good trainer and bad trainer. Yeah, because and I think I think the the end game in trying to teach teach somebody how to do something right is to make sure that injuries don't happen mm-hmm. down the line by intentionally exacerbating or causing injuries that completely mm-hmm. defeats the purpose of whatever you're trying. Another another funny thing about this, not funny, but um, somebody Still who, who matter, Bobby, <laughs> humorous. Somebody somebody who like. Basically said that uh, Bill DeMont was doing the the absolutely wrong thing was Hardcore Holly, one of the most oh like, wow yeah. wrestlers in the ring. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. don't do this to people, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought that was like huge of Hardcore Holly to come out and like talk against Bill DeMont. Um, well, he's also a trainer, which yeah, he knows that people are going to go to him mm-hmm. if he's safer than Bill DeMott, mm-hmm. and they yeah, know true. he's going to be some, right there. <laughs> some some notes to things to the chat room, and we'll move on here. Um, but uh, Garza's uh, pointing out it came out in 2013, but everyone got fired again. Uh, if Ivelisse, 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 yeah, yeah. Ziggler's brother, a bunch of guys got fired with it, uh, going around for a while again, tipping point. Um, oh, that's Matt. Hi, Matt. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Matt. Um, but yeah, it, it, trying to engage the chat room, Sorg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but then let us know and what you way, thought. Cars Car yeah. uh, completely separate. Cars did say he would swipe right for Ryback. Yes, yeah, so he actually started a hi- hashtag yeah. swipe right for Ryback. So mm-hmm. you guys can have fun with that one. Uh, I would love to see that thing get trending on Raw or SmackDown this week. <laughs> um, but no, if you have any thoughts on this, we're going to put this question out. His uh, hashtag WMS big question. And uh, the prize for this week, of course, is the show that just came out. The show that is going to be on digital download in the morning. I haven't even uploaded this thing yet. Uh, but you can check out Cage Fury from this past weekend. Um, like I said, like we mentioned before, earlier in the show, including guys like Crimson there in the video if you're watching on the video um oh he has a mask (laughs) (laughs) no it's face paint actually Um, and he's holding front of the show (laughs) aiden veil by the way in a very precarious position um (laughs) and so much more uh but you'll get clear uh hashtag wms big big question let us know what you think about the bill demont 
situation and you have a chance to win that here next week on the show uh so in the meantime let's uh you know let's mention something else speaking of indie wrestling and supporting some good trained people and some of these people that maybe had to deal with this situation unfortunately pro wrestling um we have a store over there you can go pro wrestling com slash wms and uh, you can uh, support the show. I had some people picking up some T-shirts the last couple of weeks uh, oh. over here in the, in the other places that we have T-shirts. But I wanted to point you first here. Uh, we also have another T-shirt shop, uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, there's one for Spreadshirt. I know somebody picked up a Mayhem Club shirt this week. Um, so oh, really, they're all, they're all, oh, that was Matt, that was that was mainstream. Matt picked that up. I had to get it before before they all got shut down. Well, they didn't get shut down. <laughs> On Spreadshirt, we're safe. I, I guess they're pulling all the Bullet Club uh, lookalikes off of uh, Pro Wrestling Tees because they have oh, New Japan. But you can get your official Bullet Club shirts. Pro Wrestling Tees uh, has has the New Japan official merchandise and the official merchandise uh, designs thanks to Alex Cars. Uh, Dutters, you, you you wore one of these to mm-hmm. uh, to the show last night. Property of Mayhem. That's right. That's right. Representing <laughs> at the shows as always. Um, but you can check out all kinds of other stuff. Like Chris Jericho has an official store on here now. Yeah. Uh, somebody was pointing out. Uh, but one of you guys on the show, I, I, I think me. I was listening to. Yeah. Um, if you're a fan of Kevin Nash, who's going to be joining us in IWC here. Uh, next month. Lab nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it is. A, it is a slap nuts t-shirt. Actually, it is completely a slap nuts t-shirt. I'm going to try to load this up. But you can also other stars uh, that we people we've had them on the show, like DJ Zima Ion uh, of TNA is on here, and um, I'm pretty sure TNA doesn't get a cut of that. Lita. Um, Blue Meanie, uh, other indies, uh, Chris Hero, friend of Eamon, um, Christopher Daniels, friend of the show. China? China? Mm-hmm. China. What kind of oh. merchandise does China have, I wonder? Um, I we wonder if she has a shirt that says never going in the Hall of Fame. The China Nader, oh. and I don't know what this is. China. Sure it's just China well, if you want to represent, sure it's just green. if you want to represent your China at the next WWE show, Bobby. No. Get the China China Nader. China China Nader. Part of her head's missing. Yep. Wait, what is that? Like what? Maybe it's symbolic. She... That's from uh, that's a that's a very bad rip off of the Terminator. <laughs> Terminator. That is the triple X porn edition of the Terminator. Are you China Kata? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to experiment with that, but start at ProWrestlingTees.com Come with me. Slash I don't, short, I don't want to experiment with <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> On that note, let's uh, take it over to Mac Harlins. He's prepared with the big board. We're doing me? something special tonight. It's Mayhem Mania Week 8. Sorg? Yes? Before we begin... We must assemble the Patreons. Oh, oh, jeez. I, I guess we do have to do that. Um, like, oh, like assemble! Like... <laughs> and uh, I'll take care of um, some of the business at hand right now. <clears throat> I need to see if my band of white's going to come down and help me out with this thing. Dana White's gonna help you. Dana, Dana White. I wish. I wish we lived. In, can I just say? I wish we lived in a world where Vanna White ran the UFC. Oh. Also, also, also. <laughs> great Vanna. Great Vanna White reference. I was then followed by Mike singing the Price Is Right theme for some reason. At least do the Jeopardy theme. It's on the same network. There you go. They're both by Murder of Griffin. I had Enzo and Cass in my head, all right? And that's yeah. where I got the uh, presses right thing stuck. Okay. All right, we're, we're inviting in well, the... Uh, uh, we got one Patreon. We got our right, Patreons yeah, yeah. In, in, in the house here, Matt. Yeah. So explain the situation, and hopefully, hopefully your video comes back here. There you go. Yeah. That was uh, weird. All right. It's Mayhem oh, Mania. Building now a better WrestleMania card for you, not necessarily the one WWE's going to create. We're going to make a better one. And look how well we've done so far. Look at the three I matches that have graduated to permanent so far. We've got th- – this is it, baby. Look at this stuff. Uh, anything on there? Miz versus David Mistel. <laughs> Rusev versus Brock Lesnar. Goldust versus Stardust. Those three are in. You're just oh, like a blank sheet of paper. None yeah, of your bandwidth dropped like crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry for the dissertation. Anyway. <laughs> right, no, honestly, Matt, we can't. We really, we, from really last can't, week. we really can't read any of those. <laughs> Oh That's what he's saying. I'm putting them up there and I'm recapping them for you. Everybody, can, don't worry. Everybody, everybody can see it at home in HD. It's fine. Oh, okay. Get one of these patrons to pay for a digital board, Matt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's That's the six dream. other matches that made it through that that made it from last week. Um, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. The Lucha Dragons versus the Brothers of Destruction, The Undertaker and Kane. Ouch. Chris Axel versus Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Sting, John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus Alex Riley, and Charlotte versus I'm sorry Char Char versus Sasha Banks. Um, now, as you can see, there are six here. We need to have eight. So, um, <laughs> I, I am I am genuinely impressed. I'm not buying, no, I'm not buying a digital board if you're going to be able to pull fucking paper. Yeah, that's, that. that's amazing. That's well done. Guys, you got to video this one. There's two, <laughs> he pulled the paper, and there's two more spots that just appeared out of magic. It really was out of magic. Sorry, can you edit the prices <laughs> right so wonder. No, we'll get pulled down from YouTube. <laughs> By the way, I'm looking at this on the YouTube feed, and it does. You can actually read this. Nice. So, <clears throat> you know what? Good for you, Matt Carl. Let's carry what we got to do this one step at a time before the Patreon subscribers run wild. Uh, we've got to fill these last two slots. Um, and as we do, the people who created the matches that graduate get to create the new matches. Mm -hmm. um, so Riz and Bobby are the ones who created the two matches that graduated. Mm -hmm. Do you fellas remember the matches that you created? I do. For us to fill I, these I spots. Do. Bobby, go ahead. Me first? You first, Bobby. All right. My match is Bray Wyatt versus – I'll wait till you write Bray Wyatt. That's good. Go on. Good job, Bobby. Versus Finn Balor. Oh, that's coming back. Oh, wow. In a oh, battle of just... people who are never going to get to the ring on time. <laughs> break City, well, baby. We'll throw in, we'll throw in the Undertaker in. soon enough. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> the Undertaker already has a match. And now, Riz, if you would share your newly created match with everybody, with all the children in the class. <laughs> okay. So, I got... Wade Barrett hmm. versus Go Kevin on. Owens. Ooh. Kevin Owens. Ooh. Notice we both used NXT superstars telling you about the current state of the WWE. Yeah. <laughs> Exploiting <laughs> the whole list card, of NXT band. This whole entire card is just our fantasy booking of a WWE NXT takeover. This is this – is, this is NXT R WrestleMania. <laughs> All right, it looks like Vanna's not going to be here. All right, well. You're me... here. You're here, Matt. You're our Vanna. Uh, all the Patreons are here. The Patreons have assembled. AJ's here. Charles mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. Fresh to the scene, Mad Mike. Patreon cheapskate, Mad Mike is here. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Mike is correct. The executive producer of the Wrestling Mayhem Show is not here. Buddy is not here. But Buddy sent him. His moves to me. Yeah, now, I think Buddy, gets, I think Buddy gets number one. Buddy Buddy's gonna go one. first. Buddy gets number uh, one. Buddy told me, I said, Buddy, you could pick any eight of these, any one of these eight matches, and you oh, can no. graduate it to the super card. No Whoa. questions asked. You have wow. the powers yeah. to graduate it. Wow. You know what Buddy said? Buddy said no. No. Oh. No. I don't want to graduate a match. I want to change a match. And you know what I no. said? I said, buddy, you're forking over that much to ching for Sorgatron. <laughs> Do whatever you want. So, buddy mm. said, I want to make a change to one of the matches. Oh, no. I want to make scared. a change, buddy said, to that match right I, there. We can't, we can't see it. it. We can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Move that screen up. Buddy wants it's to LB. change. It's LB's match. Buddy wants to change LB's match. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, Mike has to fix it. Buddy wants to have somebody other than Alex Riley. Oh, what? No. Oh, it's Bo Dallas, isn't it? Buddy's gonna. <laughs> we're gonna find out who Buddy wants to have replace. Oh wow! Oh wow! We have cards. Everybody, wow! Carl is good for you. Good. 
I wanted to your head like uh, Whoa, Johnny Carson. So yeah, you can so actually cut Matt, open the you envelope. Just tell your kids this was a science project. <laughs> no, the volcano's next week. Okay. <laughs> I want. I want to point out. I believe the model train is right up, right, right, right next to it. Because that I'll, I'll I'll bring the model train in next week. Okay. I'm, I'm actually really. You know, it would have been awesome. The model train would have brought the the, the envelope up. Just like Mister Rogers. All right, here we go. There's a model train and a volcano in this. This envelope <laughs> is the man who will replace Alex Riley in the LV3 match in Mayhem oh, Mania. We should oh, get. We guess. Thing. We already know. Yeah, hold on, hold on, Matt, 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 Matt. Hold on, before you read it, before you read it, can we guess? Wait, wait, who is who is it? What, what's the match now with Alex Riley? Really? For those that don't know, no. Cena, it's John Cena it's versus Cena. Roman Reigns versus The Rock versus Alex Riley. Okay. And Buddy oh. decided he doesn't want Alex Riley, so he's giving mm. no, somebody else. Does anybody want to guess? Does it's anybody want to guess? Like me, yes, me, me, we me, all want to yeah, guess. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Riz, Bo Dallas, mm-hmm. Mike. Triple H. AJ? Mm, Rikishi. Barsa? <laughs> Mojo Raleigh. Bobby? Bo, da- Bo Dallas. I'm going to go with Riz, too. Eamon? I'll say Bo Dempsey. Shorg? Bushwhacker Dempsey. Luke. <laughs> Luke! Oh wow! Luke? Luke? Wait, it's Luke. 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 Dutters, Dutters has to guess, too. Replace. Dutters has to guess, too. Dutters has oh, to I'm guess sorry. Too. Dutters, I totally forgot. I'm sorry. Dutters? Axelmania. Ax- Axel's oh, already, that's a good uh, one. already on the card then. Oh, darn it. Oh. I'm sorry. Somebody already said Triple H, so Bam. Triple H yeah, isn't on the yeah. card. Never mind. Carry on. I was like, I can't see it. Is everybody ready yeah. for the reveal? Uh-huh. Yep. So, go. The man who will place Alex Riley as decreed by Buddy will be. Oh, no. <laughs> Riz, do yeah. we know Buddy Landa or do we know Buddy Landa? I don't know what I don't know what his like why he likes him so he much? Believes. He believes. Awesome. He, he believes. believes. He believes. Now, here's the question, though: Will LB know? Oh, he'll know. He knows. He, he knows. He LB, knows. LB, LB, LB is everywhere. I'm sorry, but Lunchbox's cave underneath the Allegheny River uh, <laughs> is is currently shaking. If you're, <laughs> by the way, if you're listening. And you're on that wonderful, wonderful uh, tee that goes under the river now, and the train is shaking. Just know that that is the solemn cry and <laughs> scream of Lunchbox. It's Such happening right now, match. but it will continue for a while until Can we I, fix the match. I'm really God, sorry if you were on the train and it's choked. He, he just texted me with two words, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. I Did he really know. text you? No. no that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. All right, now. Motherfucker's so, got Alex Riley radar. Right, we got, an- we we got another guest. Not all, because as Patreon subscribers are providing so much good, so much help to the Wrestling Mayhem show, we don't just – one one thing to do is not enough. No, no, no. You must do many things. So no, he doesn't. I told, I told the Patreon subscribers, look. Everyone's been asking for this since we started Mayhem Mania. I swear, since round one, you guys have been clamoring for this. You want the stipulation option. Oh, you want to mm-hmm. add stipulations to these yes, matches. But I didn't want to rush headlong into it. But you know what? Patreon in the background seemed like a good place to start. Mm-hmm. So Buddy said, yes, I would like to add a stipulation <laughs> to a match. I'd like to add a stipulation to this match. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! Does anybody want to guess what the stipulation's gonna be? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a cage. really terrible idea here. Steel cage. Look Inspiration on the pole. Uh uh-uh, uh. Right. No. If Bo Dallas wins, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and uh, The Rock all have to follow Bo Dallas around for three months as Bo leaders. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Losers leave wrestling. All right. I'll, I'll take a guess here. All right. Punjabi prison match. <laughs> Bad Mike? Um, I'll, I'll say losers leave wrestling. Garza? I'm going to say a four-way hair versus hair match. <laughs> wow. Bobby? Inspiration on a cold match. <laughs> oh. uh, I, I'm going to say something disgusting now. You do it. Do it. No, do it. No, do it. Fucking do it. Lego death match. Sorg? King of the road match. King of the Road Match. King of the Road Match. <laughs> oh my those, God. Are all, those are all excellent choices, but Buddy, Buddy's a little bit more traditional. Everybody ready? 
Hell in a Cell. <laughs> oh my God, Bo Dallas is going to die. No, I, I have a question. Someone tells me Bo Dallas is going into a conveniently placed um, dump truck with a bag full of hay. <laughs> now, I, I will say this: um, Matt Carlin's has really nice handwriting. Just yeah. that out there. <laughs> man's got nice handwriting. That's I, clear. You know, when this started. When this started, I couldn't do the Z's. Now I can. So it's You're cool. learning. Is that so it was Axel versus Riggler versus Brian versus Reigns. <laughs> was that Sam Rudo? 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 I have no idea. All right. Um, yes. Oh, okay. you're too so young. Now we're Amen. On to the rest of the Patreon subscribers, and we're going to start with Mad Mike because. Those with, who've been with us the longest should go last. Mm -hmm. So, Mad Mike. Well, I was going to go the other way around. You're with short yeah. timing. Because, you, you, know, know. you know, he just came on just to do this. You know that, he right? He just came storming in. I know, Mad I mean, Mike, you paid money so you could graduate LB's match, and look what happened. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, That I was, actually, that was to actually going to be my the, first. Uh, I was going to clarify that. something for the stipulation. The stipulation can't be removed. Ooh. Sticks oh, 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 oh. By the way, guys, so if you're gonna move, start moving guys around. If you moved out, the so for next week in round eight, if you moved all of this entire match out and brought a new match in, it would have to be a hell in a cell match. Nice. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We, That's, nice. I just want to let you guys know. Hi for the stipulations. Question: what? Are we allowed to switch matches that are already on the card to Swap a hell in a cell? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I will allow that in uh, in round eight. But right now, um, okay. let's get down to the... Oh, oh, hold on, hold up. First, we do have so, a communication with Buddy Landell on Twitter. He oh. sent all of us this. <laughs> and it's a bully. And there's our picture for the for the show. No, we already got one. It's Ryback. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, no, it, yeah, it's the Ryback pose. Swipe right for Bo Leave. <laughs> Mike. All right. Um, Mike. Yes. As a Patreon subscriber, I grant you the godlike powers to graduate any one of these eight matches to the permanent super card. By the way, all of you could have kicked in a dollar for this episode. I know. God, That's what power. I'm saying. Like, it's a buck. Oh, good. It's a buck. I feel like it would be weird if um, I kicked in a dollar for this episode. Yeah, <laughs> you could have done it. You just didn't. So, Mad Mike, carry on. Get, uh, right now. What, what if I don't want to graduate any of them? Then you could do what Buddy did, and you can make a change to one of the uh, existing matches is to suit your fancy. Okay. Do I Ooh. also get to name a stipulation? You also get to name a stipulation. Okay. Ooh, um, to any other match. It doesn't have to be for the same match. Hmm. All right. I'm going to add. Can I add two wrestlers? Two wrestlers? Mike, you just showed up to the Patreon game. Two. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking a question. Three questions. I'm asking a question. Only one wrestler. Okay. Uh, I will add Paige to Char Char versus Sasha. Nah. No. <laughs> That's never going to graduate. Right. That's acceptable. I was also I going to add AJ, off, but I... Well, next week everybody graduates, so... Congratulations. Not necessarily, Bobby. We get to throw hats. Your mom goes to college, and she graduated. We get to throw hats. Fancy hats. All right. You made your move. Yes. Now, you can't create something because you didn't graduate anything, but right. you can add a stipulation if you choose. All right. I will uh, now add. We're, talking, we're not just talking stipulations. You could do special ref. You could do titles. It's wide open. Use your Can I add a special ref to a graduated match? Space. What? Can I add a special ref to a graduated match? Yep. yep. You can add stipulations to graduated matches. Uh, Thanks for asking that question. That was something I wanted to clarify. All right. Rusev versus Lesnar is now a last man standing match. Oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. So good. Yes. And the good moves. I approve of that message. Thank you. I was going to add Dusty Rhodes as the special ref. I, I thought you were Florida. thinking about that. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but then I'm like, oh, poor Dusty can't move. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, you know, Rusev and Lesnar just literally beating the fuck out of each other until neither one of them can stand. That seems better to me. I like it. Uh, that brings us to AJ. Bo Diggity. <clears throat> Woo! <clears throat> 
<laughs> Would have, you like to some, graduate a match? I have some work to do here, gentlemen. A oh, big hot mess. And as, and as someone who uh, I, I have been a, a Patreon subscriber since the beginning, I think Garza was only like one week ahead of me. Mm-hmm. So I've been, a, I've been a subscriber. I've been a Mayhem Show listener for a great sum of time. I've been on the show many, many times. I just want to talk about myself for a little bit here. <laughs> I can. It's, your, it's your Patreon in the bank. Exactly. No, I, I cashed in. No, by the way, Patreon in the bank, I take the suit. When, once I cash it in, I actually put the stuff back in, and I bring the briefcase home. With me. This is true. This is actually <laughs> the second or third second. time AJ has cashed in. Yeah. Does mm-hmm. it also have Green Slam and JBL's hat and soda and pop? And- and yep. one time he was to- he was pretty drunk. By that. Is it, is I was it, not pretty drunk. That is a lie. And is it made sooner. of chocolate? Uh, no, it is actually nougat on the inside, though. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I will graduate a match here. Oh? Mm. <clears throat> I want to see that Ziggler, Brian, Zane, and Axel match. <laughs> Permanent. Oh, wow. I do not uh, want to let that one go. Be. That one stays. Wow. Because right. Axel Mania lives... <laughs> and uh, that match would just be fun as shit to watch. That one's for me, uh, so which means I have to create a match now to fill that little slot in. <clears throat> Brazing. And um, I think what I'm going to do here, uh, I've been thinking about this for a little bit. Okay. And I'm kind of sad that, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are in a match. Actually, because I would re- I would like to use them, but I re- also really like that match just as a thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put Cesaro, who was supposed to be in the Shield originally, according to CM Punk. Was it Cesaro that was supposed uh, to be in there? Hero. Uh, Chris Hero. No, Chris Hero. Chris Hero. Chris Hero. Chris Hero. I'm going to put the other half of the uh, Kings of Wrestling in there. I'm going to put in Cesaro, and I'm going to put Cesaro in there with Sheamus. Oh, that's a good match. That's because right. I want to see more death. I just <laughs> want somebody to get their chest kicked in. I want to see Cesaro just – I just want to see those guys beat the, just the piss out of each other in front of 75,000 people. And then I'm able to put a uh, – I'm able to put a, 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 stipulation a stipulation on the match. On anything you want, even some of the graduated matches Still, and I really, I really want to put one on. Uh, you're getting, you're getting shouts from the chat room. Uh, Kennel in Hell, uh, Last Man Standing match. <laughs> Hold, on. Uh, Hold on, Kennel so. from Hell, Last Man Standing. You can just add dogs to the Hell in the Sun match. <laughs> right why, are, why are there corgis all around the ring? <laughs> We didn't specify what kind of dog. No, it's going to be Shih It's just Daniel Bryan's dog, Josie. Oh, That's don't, it. don't you put Josie in harm's way like that. Um, I think the no. stipulation that I'm going to don't put be out Natty's cats. I, I Actually, Kennel from Hell really kind of works in that match since Bo Dallas is in it. It's kind of like his like counter to the violence of the Hell in the Cell is to bring in cute puppies. <laughs> I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to make that Lucha Dragons Undertaker and Kane match a loser leaves town match. Oh, oh no! Oh, wow. wow! You 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 are you are doing God's work, AJ. I I, I approve of this. No, message. but wait a minute. If you guys want Taker and Kane to leave, you know they're not losing that match. Man. Right, which means that Sin Cara goes away forever. Oh, but Kalisto oh, does. Kalisto. Kalisto. Oh. Kalisto can get work elsewhere. And you Undertaker know. inadvertently it's throws Sin- Kalisto into orbit when he gives him the last ride. Just Seriously. Oh, Sin Cara's I, I, not Sin Cara anymore. He's a nice man. Kalisto's in the Lucha Zone, Michael. <laughs> I honestly wanted to make that a uh, loser has to go to that like dimension zone that like General Zod went into. And like, a, <laughs> like, they went in like, the zone? window and then like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> loser goes to the impact zone. That, that'd be oh. <laughs> so that's yeah, I, by the way, the loser by <laughs> a loser leaves town match in WWE is just loser shows up on impact next week. <laughs> So yeah, I I wanted to make sure that that was out there. Um, so there, I, I, I want to point out uh, to Garza and to um, anyone else that goes. Uh, Alex Garza in the chat room says, if anyone can get WLC two on the final card, he will buy them a shirt from um, Pro Wrestling Tees. 
Garza, you're on. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you, you, do you want to graduate a match? Yes, I will graduate. Wait, do, a match. do you want me to help you out by telling you what's on here? Because you might have trouble. Seeing By the way, uh, Garza may have the best background in the history yeah, of the Wrestling Mayhem awesome. show. <laughs> <laughs> Garza, you want me to run down what's Fuck here? You. So that you my office is lovely. Graduate. No, I, I know what match I'm. I'm graduating. Um, I, I initially didn't want Paige in, but let's leave her. Let's graduate the women's match. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah. nicely done. Jar Jar. Sasha. Jar Jar Banks. Instead of Jar Jar Banks. Oh, Bobby, no. Bobby, no. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. no. No. That's their tag team name, if anything. Jar Jar Banks? Jar Jar Banks. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Misa, a female wrestler. <laughs> oh, Misa, give Diva a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate you all right now. Uh, Garza? <laughs> Eamon, you don't even know what Jar Jar Banks is. Uh, now, now we have an open slot where you can create. We all see it too. No, no, no. Uh, there's something else I want to see. I want to see a man fight to get his job back. I want to see Triple H face. And this goes to the boards for you to vote. I want to see Triple H versus Brad. Brad Maddox Maddox. Nice. Okay. Nice. Oh my god. Nice. What? Brad Maddox. He's I want to point uh, out. Uh, I, 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 if I could go back, I would graduate that. I would graduate that. I want to put Orton is not on this card. No, of course Brad is. Maddox is. Well, let's talk about who's hey. done better things lately. Hey, we're, we're supposed to make our card. <laughs> I know. A better card. I just think it's funny. But no, when when Tony was saying that, I literally thought he was going to say Triple H versus CM Punk. And if that were to actually happen, I would probably stop watching wrestling. <laughs> the only thing that would tell me to do is stop watching wrestling. Paul Levesque versus Phil Brooks in an MMA contest. Oh, God. Uh, Garza, would you care to stipulate one of these? Stipulate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Going back, you late. Going back Stip. to the. To the theme of give Divas a chance, and and this is why I didn't want Paige in this match, but now she's there. Uh, that Divas match is gonna take uh, the biggest time of the ma- of the show, and it's gonna be a 60 minute Iron Man match. Nice. Oh, oh, wow! Wow! Iron wow. wow. Woman match. Sorry, Iron Alex, Woman. A- Alex, well, Alex Garza is the greatest, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a damn. They're man. gonna be like, we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you 40. We're going to give you 40 minute entrances just to compensate with the ratio that you guys are going to get. <laughs> See, we're going to actually start the bell on the pre show. So. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I'm sorry, did somebody hear a bell? <laughs> and, we're, no. and we're going to Renee no. Young at the kickoff center. There's like 10 people in the stands. <laughs> just um, somebody here wow. has to know has there ever been an Iron Woman match? Yeah, sure. Damon. Yeah. Not in WWE. Not in WWE. Not in WWE. No, of course not. Because no, women probably, aren't wrestlers. Probably Shimmer. The vote entire NXT episode to an Iron Woman's match. Yeah, they should. Sure. Well, wow. I think I think we've had um, some good success. We didn't get the mid Carter. We didn't get the bull mid Carters. There is no bull mid Carters. There, the there was no bull mid Carters. Oh, yeah, you guys want the bull mid Carters back next week? It's, it's going to F stuff up if we do it next week. Do I want to really like I wanna, I wanna take Ricky Steamboat out and put in Terry Funk and make him fight in the Scorpions and Glue match. <laughs> <laughs> what? Scorpions and Glue? Sorry, Bobby, you got to pay for that. Uh, but we will, <laughs> uh, we will open up another podcast. <laughs> we will open up the stipulation <laughs> option to I'm everybody. Sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on, Bobby. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> is, is a, hold on, hold on. Is yeah, a Scorpion yeah. and Glue match? Is a scorpion and glue match just a Taipei death match, but instead yes. of glass, you live scorpions? Scorpions and glue. There's just oh, like a, it's just the entire ring is like it's just filled with glue, as if Austin has just. <laughs> you know, I fought in. I fought. Just spray the entire ring out. I and then somebody goes ring. scorpions. Oh no! This is mildly inconvenient. I'm not getting glue. I fought in a, a raise a bear to his hide his strength and kill it match. <laughs> You know, um, these scorpions would be way more effective if they weren't bogged down in all this glue. 
<laughs> oh, ow, ow, it hurts. <laughs> um, Matt, Matt, I have a suggestion. In, instead, okay. of the, instead of the bowl of mid carters, mm-hmm. a bowl of everyone else who isn't on the card. How about the bowl of main adventures who no one wants to see on this card? <laughs> <laughs> Randy Orton. So, That's Kane, what I was getting at. Kane's already on the card. Kane's on the yeah. card already. Big Show, Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Randy Orton no, has I'd been on like, like one, one week, I think, Randy Orton snuck on. And he's doing card. better. Yeah. He's been great. They also <laughs> really changed stupid. him for Curtis. Wait, somebody changed him for Curtis Axel, wasn't it? I would um, like to. I would like to see nah, a bowl I of. So. I would like to see a bowl of non WWE people, like people of <laughs> fire. Lucha Underground recently. bowl. Lucha Underground. <laughs> El, yeah, I would like to see Lucha Underground. Build a bot. TNA. I want to like re. Let's get funky here. Or a bowl <laughs> of Hall of Famers. That, that's the only <laughs> hard fast rule of. of or maybe. Of, out on this is that we're trying to stay in the realm of reality, but maybe, maybe, maybe after Mania we'll just go crazy. Maybe but a bowl of celebrities. Next Triple week A is making a World Cup. Like let's. Next week is round eight, Sorg. Next week is the oh, final Jesus round. Christ. It's the final count. All right, but every match will graduate next week. No, not every match will graduate. Oh, I mean like, the after. I, I got the thinking here. We've got, die in a fight. We've got five <laughs> matches here. Okay. And we'll have another eight here. Oh, jeez. So what we'll do, what we'll do after round eight, after round eight, we'll see. I doubt we'll have one ready to graduate, but on its own merits. After round eight, we will take the eight matches that are on here. We'll put them to a vote on the Facebook page on uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. The top three vote getters will graduate, and we will have a final eight match card. Oh, wow. I like it. I like that. I'm fan and So choose your steps wisely. Come ready and loaded for bear, because uh, you're gonna have to. Oh, we're not just stepping to the past. Hmm? Yeah, scorpions and glue match. <laughs> yeah, the stipulation option will be introduced, but not as an extra option. No, 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 no. That's only for the Patreon. You gotta pay for that, kids. Mm. So you can either okay. do your new normal. Swap I'm paying swap, one more dollar. Swap trade anything you <laughs> well, want. You're already paying a dollar get, for the. Sh- but the Patreon party's over, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bo yeah. Diggity, Garza, mm-hmm. Buddy, Mike, thanks for supporting the Wrestling Mayhem yes, Show. I hope you. you found this rewarding. Yes. I did. My stomach hurts now because <laughs> <laughs> I laughed real hard. <laughs> I wish you could make a scorpions and blue match in WWE 2K15. I'm sure you can. I'm sure it's all sting. On that note. Just have millions, like just have two stings in each corner. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, let's learn what everybody, uh, let's learn what everybody learned in wrestling this week. I learned things. Oh, daughters, what did you learn this week? I learned that Riz played football. Yes. (laughs) I have a picture. Oh, wow. There it, no, that, that yeah, that too. that's soccer. That's a soccer. Same thing. That's that. That would be soccer. Well, he, he but it's football in America. Football. No, that's actual football. Football. Wow. <laughs> I mean, Matt Garland, hey, what'd you learn you from wrestling this week? Too. Me too. Damn right. I was in band. Matt Garland. <laughs> Matt Garland. What's what? I, I was in the band. Yes, I was in the <laughs> band. <laughs> I, I played trombones. I was cool. Yeah, I, I, I fellow boner. Well. <laughs> I'm, mean, I'm mean with the slides. I played oh, yeah, man. I played the acoustic. I played cymbals. I'm bringing my Position. trombone to the WrestleMania party. Uh-huh. You're bringing your what boner did we to all the instruments of this week. Did we all play trombones? And I played a violin. I, I, I played the acoustic I guitar. I learned that marching band is fun. <laughs> Matt Carlin, what did you learn from wrestling? wrestling? Oh, I learned from wrestling this week, I learned that that belt does not belong to WWE. That belt belongs to Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. No. AJ, what would you learn this week? Uh, I learned that uh, Alex Riley uh, is coming back. And we have Kevin Owens to thank for getting him off of commentary. (laughs) Thank you, Kevin Owens. Your face turn is complete. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Garza, the Wrestling Revolution dot com. What did you learn this week? I learned that King Cuerno from Lucha on the Ground is one fashionable motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that that is true. That All is right. true. All right, that well, cowboy man. hat. 
Cowboy hey, can Mario. I? Can, speaking of fashion, can I tie two shows together? Who's going to be the first person to either show up with a Apple Watch, or <laughs> like make fun of the Apple Watch on a wrestling show? Who's going to be the first one to do it? Dario Cuerdo. JBL. Dario Cuerdo. The Miss. Bobby F. J. Town. What'd you learn? Smart Maggo. Bobby J. Town. What'd you learn? Um, I learned that uh, Damien Damien Wisdow oh, was wearing a penguin's hat, and he had he really committed because he had a fake tattoo <laughs> on his neck. <laughs> yes, I love how you how you learned that he was wearing something on his head. He was. <laughs> he was. That's what I learned. I learned about fashion. Uh, he was also wearing a Taylor Gang or Die hoodie, which yeah, is he was. Kind of amazing. Yeah. He, 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 he commits to the role. He commits to the role. Amen. what'd you learn? I learned uh, for the first time since my many years of watching professional wrestling, I am completely unexcited about WrestleMania. What? what? Wow. I, I, I literally am like, it's happening. Wow. I'm, I'm not excited about really any of it. And you were on the wrong show. show. I'm glad I what didn't have you, you on the first half. Oh, yeah, with scorpions you. and glue. <laughs> take it out. Scorpions and glue. That's what we need to bring that's, it back. That's what we need. Maybe, uh, you know, don't, Joe Dabrowski has this tape uh, in his office. What happened to my hair? What? what <laughs> <laughs> my hair blew up. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, trying did to you get scorpions and glue in it? I don't know. He's got this, he's got this tape with like an al- alligator death match and stuff. Like That's what we need for WrestleMania. Alligator or at least Amen. Yeah, it's got ridiculous stuff. <laughs> Lego Deathmatch. No, that alligator. Yeah, yeah, the, the actually, the Legos, Legos would hurt. Uh, Mad Mike, what'd you learn? I learned um, that when Daniel Bryan was courting Brie Bella, there was a point where Seamus petted a naked Brie Bella on the head. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a real thing yeah. on Total Divas, and it's going to be in Daniel Bryan's book. <laughs> That's <laughs> Honestly, that is the biggest mind-blowing thing I learned this week in wrestling. Um, uh, Bobby, or no, Riz. I did my win already. I, I learned that the first thing that I saw when I came in from work at 9 o'clock made me weep like a little child. Mm, it wasn't me noodle. It's close. But the, uh, the uh, Connor the Crusher thing. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no, I'm an ugly cry. Got some ugly cry. Console Arena <laughs> I, was I, soggy. I, yeah. I was in a fetal position. I don't I don't think I could have like I, I don't think I could have held up at the arena. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, all right, cause let's let's talk about this real quick. So Connor well, Mahalik is getting the Warrior Award, oh, which mm-hmm. is the very first uh award uh he's the fir- very first recipient. Uh, I'm, everybody here has already heard of this. I'm not going to rehash the story because it's going to make me cry. Yeah, I'm, I, um, but will make uh, me Daryl awesome. cry. I, let me let me ask a question here. For those of you who are at Raw, how loud was that pop? Mm. Yeah, staying ov- ovation. It was it was pretty pretty tremendous. Yeah, and I'm I, I I can't imagine what. By the way, I can't imagine what his dad went through for eight years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah, I can't. Yeah. So um, it's really awesome <clears throat> that they that uh, Connor Mahalik is getting a WWE Hall of Fame spot. Um, I hope, I really hope that I I, I can almost guarantee that Stephanie's going to do the induction, but I'd really like to see Daniel Bryan do the induction. Yeah. Um, but we'll I announce it's going to be uh, anyone else. It's going to be Daniel Bryan and Dana Warrior. Awesome. Oh. Well, there we go. So I, I really like I, I really like that. Uh, that was a nice touch by WWE. I hope that here's I hope it doesn't open the floodgates and be like, Mike well, was also a big WWE fan and he was a Make a Wish kid because they do all of the Make a Wish stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But I I want to see that that like Warrior Award recipient every year be something like kind of awesome that we can all kind of look at and be like, yeah, that was really cool. Awesome heartfelt um, moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like like how they did the WrestleMania uh, twenty four special, and there was a lot of crying. Like yeah, there, there was God, a lot of crying. So years watching that. Yeah, yeah. So um, times. what did I learn? Wait, did I get you? Did I hit you up, Dutters? I showed a picture of Riz. Oh, that's taking right. Taking a ball to the face. That hmm. taking balls to the face. Right. What's up? Um, I learned <laughs> the most. Uh, I talked about kind of the carniness and making money at indie shows, and the most amazing Kids thing. Kids are sword. The, 
The most amazing thing I saw was uh, when we're sitting there and to the, to the point where both like Joe Dabrowski like, and I just looked at each other, him and commentary, I'm on the switcher right beside him at Clearfield for Is IWC and saying that motherfucker, uh, because John McChesney was in the ring and he's a good guy now. And they have these, um, these confetti cannons right oh no and his opponent of the night was kind of the uh the the king of the confetti cannons the the king of the party kind of thing with joseph brooks is kind of his deal uh so joe or joe mcchesney john what is his name john mcchesney says uh during the promo uh second segment in um you guys can come over to my merch booth and get confetti cannons because they don't want you to have them Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's pretty smart. Oh, that's not he's good. Pretty, pretty smart. Um, and he sold a bunch of confetti cans that night. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty, they're, they're pretty good at this thing. Um, but anyways, if you want to hear um, some more indie wrestling talk? Uh, check us out on the indie wrestling indie mayhem show. Aim is going to join me over there. Um, so we we have um, we have lessons learned in the chat. Room. Oh, real quick, real quick then. Uh, Alex Carr has learned that Lucha Underground makes non-wrestling fans want to go see live indie, indie wrestling, specifically his mother. Oh. And uh, Wheels learned that a scaffold match can be in any part of the arena except over the ring. Wow. Okay. What? Oh, yeah. I wanted to find out how that went Saturday night. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have a conversation about that later, maybe. Um, so hey, check out everything. Uh, MainstreamMat.blogspot.com. Don't forget the S. You get something else. Um, Wait. you get okay, something else. Now, you get, now you made me. You know, I'm not going to that. Wait, don't Google go. Charmy. Which, which, <laughs> no, no, Google no, no, Charmy. Don't Google Charmy. Um, Charmy is too. <laughs> go check out everything. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Hit up the email address at. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. Uh, go check you out said all the links. S, right? I think it's the S, maybe the P. Um, I was trying to pull up his site and i got something else. stop googling charmy um <laughs> don't no. google charmy but please subscribe to us on itunes stitcher spreaker youtube all kinds of places all linked at wrestlingmamshow.com for all the shows that we do we have so much stuff going on including my 30 days of wrestlemania um i just finished wrestlemania 13 so you'll have a couple videos up this week um, um. also what uh also please check out i think you got the site <laughs> also uh please check out the mayhem uh the mayhem minute that we're putting up every uh four days a week here at wrestling mayhem also through the youtube channel uh this past week we talked about uh, the warrior award uh gtv and, and vince russo uh swimming pool wwe finishers and training is hard you guys talking about bill demott please check out at k dutters on the twitter at matt Andy. at mainstream matt <laughs> Um, <laughs> He's just catching everybody off guard. We're like, what? Hi. Uh, at Bobby F. J. Town, at Mad Mike 483, who also joins us on that rambling review.com for that show, at the E Riz, and bo- at Bobby F. J. Town, who also <laughs> writes in podcast for the great insert coin to begin.com. Antonio Garza is, of course, uh, the wrestling revolution.com. AJ, at AJ from PGH, also does something that has nothing to do with wrestling at virtualpotholes.com. Um, oh, podcast Sorry. with Dutters at scarehouse.com. Sword, can I can I plug what we're doing on the Mayhem Watch Party? What are we doing on the Watch Party? Uh, we're doing lesser known WrestleMania matches. Uh, we've done Doink versus Crush, Ooh. and we did an awesome match of El Matador and Junkyard Dog versus <laughs> Found the <it>. Brothers. <laughs> and um, we want your opinions as to what other matches we should do. There is a post on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. Uh, please. There's a couple weeks left before we have to have a fan vote on this. Uh, put down any matches that you want us to see have a watch party on. Um, they can't be main events and they can't be championship uh, WWE title matches. But anything else is fair game. So we've already had a few on there and uh, we're looking for a few more before we do a poll. And then the most voted will be our go home watch party cool. for WrestleMania. Uh, I, I want to throw out the Doink versus Crush. Uh, like nine year old me never saw that match. I was like <laughs> super geeked up about that match. Never actually saw it. It's actually a pretty good match. <laughs> I imagine it was. I, I think both the matches we've done so far have been very enjoyable. You guys should definitely check them out. And wait till you guys see the one I have for us this week. Oh, it's a classic. It's a classic. I've decided it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm excited. Awesome. Go one to, of my that's favorite the WrestleMania. Wrestling Mayhem Show group, Facebook group, uh, for that and tons and tons of other conversations. It's a great time over there. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.